almonds, which rely on honeybees for pollination, a dwindling and increasingly expensive resource. Pistachios are wind-pollinated, and there's certainly no shortage of wind out here in California. So why are some growers turning to artificial or mechanical pollination? Yeah, it's a great question. So the first reason would be uh, what we call uh, blooms desynchroniz desynchronization. And so essentially what's happening is, uh, for various reasons, which I can explain in a moment, we have the male, the male trees, the male flowers, uh, not blooming at the same time with the females. And so obviously if they're not aligned, then uh, pistachios being a wind pollinated crop, uh, we're gonna have uh, uh, less of a yield coming off of the female tree. So uh, desynchronization is one kind of issue that we're able to uh, address. Um, and then uh, another issue is the fact that even though yes, a pistachio tree is wind pollinated, uh, growers uh, can't control how much wind's going to happen, when it's going to happen, and so uh, our solution doesn't rely on, on the wind itself because we're basically recreating the wind, if you will, right, by applying the pollen at the right time. Uh, and then there's some, other, there's some other factors as well, one of them being um, the actual environment at the time when the pollen is ready to, um, the male pollen is ready to, to pollinate the female. There was a situation actually uh, in recent years where it was it was very hot during the pollination period, uh, and there's some uh, some research and some growers that even suspected that that may have affected the yield negatively. And so again, we can, because we don't rely on um, Mother Nature, we can come into the field uh, at a specific time and, and uh, mechanically pollinate the, the trees with the with the right pollen. So, given that growers of wind pollinated crops aren't paying for bees. How do you make the business case for arti artificial pollination? You know, how much of an increase in yield you know, is enough to cover the cost of implementing this technology? The case for us to come in is to, is to try and provide the grower another tool uh, in their toolbox, uh, just like they would with irrigation or with pruning or with fertilizers, et cetera, uh, to try and increase the probability that they will have a more stable and secure crop each and every year. Uh, and in many cases, uh, we, we are adding, we are increasing yield just because we're, we're targeting um, a good quality pollen at the right time on the trees. And so uh, even, even in a year where Mother Nature was doing a perfect job, uh, we're, we're still going to potentially add more uh, to what she's doing because we're, we're just adding more pollen at the right time. So you're just starting out, but you already have one case study that showed a meaningful increase in yields. What, what results did you see there? Yeah, that particular uh, case study, which is a couple seasons ago, was 24% uh, on average uh, uh, across the, the trial. Uh, and then last year we did, we did do some other um, pollination on one grower, which we're continuing with this year and uh, more than likely the next three years. And we, we've seen some significant increases there and 15, 18, 20% there as well. Your technology is also being tested on almonds and other crops that are pollinated by bees. Why does it make sense to deploy artificial pollination for these kinds of crops? Um, so you have this decline in bee population. Then on top of that, um, other than this year, the every single year there's been more and more almond trees, uh, more acreage being planted. So you have this, you know, unfortunately a per perfect storm, if you will, for an almond grower. They've got, you know, the struggle to find bees each and every year to pollinate their, their almonds and then more almond trees coming into the industry. And so the price of the bees um, for an almond grower is going up. So just from a pure cost perspective, it's, it's becoming more and more challenging. Um, on top of that, you still have issues similar to pistachios with desynchronization. There's actually some uh, synchronizing issues with almonds as well. If, a bee, if bees are out in an almond orchard, they could be out collecting uh, nectar and, and, and pollen, but they may not even be doing the job that the grower paid them to do because of the desynchronization. Uh, so again, we, we, we have a solution that can come in that is independent of the insects, independent of desynchronization, uh, that can provide a grower another uh, option for them to pollinate their almonds. Tell me a bit about the approach that you take, um, collecting the pollen, storing it, and then accurately <laughs> dispersing it, you know, to where it needs to go. Even though we're currently uh, um, purchasing our pollen off the, on the open market right now, uh, the plan is in the next year or two is for us to actually, um, uh, you know, create our own production process. And so we, we actually have some IP on how to um, collect and process the pollen in a way so that it's clean and it's viable, mm -hmm. and then also how we store it. And so mm -hmm. that, that, that's some IP that we have that uh, <clears throat> we believe is probably one of the most critical steps in the process because if uh, the pollen is not viable, it's not alive, then... It doesn't matter how well you blow it on the trees, it's, it's not really gonna do anything for you. 
And uh, the, the, the system itself, the, the equipment that is applying the pollen, uh, it's essentially a, uh, we're using air pressure. Uh, so it's kind of a, a, a high volume, low pressure air pressure that we're pushing through uh, different canisters. So on one, one of the machines we have, there's uh, 15 different canisters. And uh, the, the pollen is actually distributed through each of those canisters through a very small tube. Inside of the tube is actually a, uh, an electrical probe, mm -hmm. and we're, we're charging uh, the pollen with electrostatic, with an electrostatic charge, a positive charge. Uh, and then the idea is that uh, the tree is grounded in earth, so it's negatively charged, and so it's, uh, we're giving the pollen a much higher likelihood of it reaching uh, the flower on the pistachio tree and then, and then pollinating. The other, the other main part of our IP is actually on the machine itself. Um, so one thing that we're doing uh, specifically with our ma machine is we're precisely applying the pollen to each tree. Um, and it is a continuous machine, so we're pulling it through the orchard behind a tractor. Uh, but the way that the control system works, uh, we, we have basically a special recipe with, with a mechanical um, piece of equipment we call a dozer. Uh, that will precisely apply specific amounts to each tree that we go by. So we're not just blowing pollen everywhere. Um, and there's a couple reasons for that. One is that uh, the pollen is expensive itself. Uh, and, and for two, there's, there's actually a potential, <clears throat> there's, there's some research that shows that even if you, you, you I don't want to say you can over pollinate, but you know, putting on too much, you're just, you're, you're sort of wasting your time at that point.